Hi everyone, my name's Anna and welcome to day seven of the 30 day home workout challenge. This day is called rejuvenate and we are going to start working a little harder um, and picking up the game, but I know you can do it. So first of all, we'll start standing. Just want you to remind yourself that you're gonna take this at your own pace and with it work within the remits of your own body. We're starting with a side lunge. So we're coming over onto our right leg here and then bring it back to the other side. So you feel a stretch here while we build heat in the quads. Now the first thing, this should feel relatively comfortable, we're making this inside of our knee point slightly outwards towards our toe. And we do that by squeezing our butt cheeks. So you drive into the heel, squeeze the cheek, and again. So I want four more here, pushing the bum slightly backwards so you're almost squatting onto that leg. Two more. Now, if this is enough for you, you're gonna stay here today. If you want to add a little extra, you're gonna reach down towards the floor, um, keeping that body centered for now, and just getting used to pushing into that heel. Go at your own pace. You don't need to speed this up at all. We're just building some heat. Awesome, keep it going. If you're feeling ready, you can start to rotate your body in towards the way that you're pointing your hand. So just stretching that inner thigh and now starting to rotate a little through our body angle. Only a tiny bit, mind, we're not gymnasts. It's not the circus. Reaching down, press into that heel and squeeze the glutes. Extra is to open up, but we must be brave through our lovely core and really control this. So whatever we're doing, we're doing four more. Three, two, good, and one. Lovely, with our feet walking slightly in, we're gonna squat down, head above the chest, and roll up, using our hands to support our body, and then bringing it up one vertebrae at a time. Good, give me two more. Open the chest, head above the chest, and pull it up, last one. Good, okay. So we're starting to find that we're feeling a little warmer and now we're gonna work on our ankles, which sounds weird, but it's not. So we're coming into this floor-based position and I want you to push into your heel and allow your knee to move as far forward as feels comfortable. You must be able to keep your heel in the floor and you shouldn't have any knee pain. So what happened once upon a time is someone decided that no one's knees were allowed to move in a squat and then everyone coached it like that, even though there wasn't necessarily, bring it back and go back in, um, any evidence to support that for most people, like it has to happen for some people with knee problems, but for most people, um, having really good ankle mobility actually improves our squat and helps us to get a really nice position. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna to do four of these, but keep it in the heel. If you feel any pain in the front of your ankle, that's probably the end of the movement for you. Then when we've done five, we're gonna bring it back and stretch our hamstring briefly. So in 10 seconds here. So the important thing when we're learning to squat is that we can allow our knees to move forward. Now this doesn't mean that we're putting loads of pressure into the knee because we're also working on the posture of our upper back and um, the activation of our glutes, which we are spending a lot of time on in here. So the third part to this is our ankle mobility, and that is what we're gonna look at today. So we're doing three more on this side, good. When you get to the end of your five, so really controlled, not feeling any pain, just feeling stretch in the calf, bring it back and stretch that hamstring, good. We will change legs second, uh, in, a, in a moment, blah, blah, blah. but first of all, I want us to do five more. So we're doing 15 on each leg, but with a nice stretch. So this shouldn't feel excessively uncomfortable for you and it's nice and controlled, but it is gonna be super helpful. Yeah, when you've done your five, you're gonna bring it back and change legs. So, starting on the other side and just having a look at your own foot and ankle and noticing if there's any difference between the way that each side works. 
and that's cool if there is, but it's just something to notice because it's something we need, all need to pay attention on when you add your squat into the mix. So when you have done your first five reps here, keeping that heel in the floor, you're bringing it back to stretch your hamstring. Now, if you can't reach the floor there, that's fine. You can come up to here, use a hand on the wall for balance, whatever works is fine. Then bring it back in, you have your second set of five. Good, and then just keep it really slow, pausing at the top and allowing your body to catch up with the feeling so you can relearn the positions of where your beautiful knees are allowed to travel to. Good, and then bring it back and flex. Hold it here just for a handful of seconds. And then let's do your last five. So this ankle mobilization um, is something that you might wanna come back to. If you find this um, an area that's gonna challenge you in your squats, um, this might be your best friend. Best friends for life. Good. And then release. So with that finished, you actually bring it up. We're gonna to start to squat. So everyone will squat slightly differently. So you don't have to look exactly like me. Also don't forget I've got scoliosis, so I'm slightly wonky. Um, your toes will probably be slightly, slightly turned out, but generally feet about hip width apart facing forward. We're going to dip, push our butt back, allowing our knees to travel slightly forward and then just come up. So we keep our shoulders above the center of our foot and come up, good. So you don't have to go really deep today. Just want you to get into the general vibes of how you feel and whether then you wanna have a fiddle with your foot position. This time when we come down, I want you to come a little lower, press into the heel and think about squeezing your butt cheeks as you bring them up. Look at the tracking of your knee line. If they're about here, we need to squeeze our bum and bring our knees out so that the inside of our kneecap points towards our baby toe. Good, and again, bringing it down, experimenting with your depth now and squeeze the glutes. Push the knees apart. If you can get your elbows in there, great, and then lift. So, work exactly in the flow that you need to do. So don't try and get all the way down to the floor if this is day one, because we, we need to keep these heels in the floor and we need to be able to keep our body up so you keep going, squatting, we're gonna do at least 20. Today, if here is where you can come to, that is where you can come to, stay with that. I would infinitely rather have a nice squat that's not too deep than this happening, because that's not the same thing, right? We need to be able to keep our chest open, allow our knees to move forward, squeeze the glutes and up. So as long as you feel like it's starting to look better, that is where we're gonna stay. So if you can come down, we might have a moment at the bottom just to push those knees open further and then lift and squeeze. Keep going, five more. So wherever you come to is a-okay. So it could be here and that's lovely. Listen to your body, three more. Keep it going. Last couple, pause and squeeze up feeling those glutes drawing up into your body from below and squeeze up, pushing the floor away. Good, shake it out. We're just gonna do a set of 10 now. Now we're feeling a little bit more comfortable. We wanna make sure that it wasn't a fluke. Um, so re-establish where you need your body to be, your feet to be, your width. They might need to be a bit wider. Some people are super narrow. You do what you've got to do today. So let's go, 10 squats, coming down, pushing those knees out, squeeze your bottom up. It's like you're sucking um, all of your worldly possessions up inside yourself. Hmm. Let's rephrase, or let's just continue and pretend it didn't happen. Three, four, squeeze, squeeze the glutes up into your body, four. And again, lower down, pause at the bottom, squeeze and draw it in, five, yes. And again, down we go, pushing the floor away. Imagine you're squeezing your floor away from yourself. And again, we've got four more. Yeah, lovely. This is where the magic is gonna happen for all of us. Good, last couple, drive in and then finish. Now that might be deeper than we've ever worked before. So we're gonna leave it for there today. See how you feel. 
and then you'll know um, how that pans out for you. You'll know if it felt a little more natural and you'll know how your body feels. We're coming into our plank that we worked on yesterday. So again, if you are happy on your knees and you want to stay there, that's all you need to do. So you're just going to hold the plank here. If you're ready for a full body, that's great. Elbows underneath the shoulders and all planks. We would we did yesterday a down dog, so down downward stretch. Today we're going to do a roll out. We come forward on the toes, making sure the hips don't drop, come back, then come up. I'm going to do five of these slowly. So slide forward like a trolley, slide back, and then squeeze up. Good, drawing that belly button in. Nice, three more forward and back and squeeze. Two more. Yes, forward, back and squeeze. Good, one more. You have got it. Forward, back and lift. Really nice. And then come off those elbows. We're going to do two more sets. Just free up your back. Good. When it feels freer, we're coming straight back in. We don't need a lot of rest. Your choice of plank. Roll forward. Roll back. And lift. Yes. Good. And again. Forward. Back. And lift. Three more. Cheese trolley. Back. Bridge into the port. Cheese trolley. Back. And lift. One more. Good. Sliding. And then lifting those hips up and then bring it off your elbows and rest. Oh, 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 oh. I'm sure you all wish there was actually music to dry me out, but unfortunately there's not. So you have to just brace yourselves. This is our final set. Make yourself into that sliding floor and just enjoy the ride. Keeping the shoulders away from your ears. Control, and again, forward, back, and up, good. Forward, back, and up. Nice, I feel like this is maybe rep four, because I have to be honest, I didn't count. So we're gonna do one more just in case it was rep four. And then lift. Good, well done. Bring it onto your back. Bring it down to the underground. Okay, here starts the more magic, which is going to be really helpful for your squats. So we're bringing our knees up. This is called TBA activation. Um, our hands are gonna be here. You're bringing your hands out to the floor and in. So just hands to start with. I want you to push your back into the floor using your front abdominals. So you're coming back and in. As you bring your elbows in, we need to contract this top part of your abs. So you'll come here and then you'll feel like you're hammering, you've got an ax and you're trying to chop someone in the head with your elbows because you're squeezing them in, good. When that feels like there's something happening, we're gonna add a little extension of the feet. We're working for 10 reps, but your back is going to stay in the floor the whole time. This is really important. And I want you to still keep that imaginary axe contraction happening all the way through here. You have four more, please. Only take your feet out as far as you can, maintaining your back in the floor. So for some people that might only be here and for other people that might be all the way out. I can't do that because of my back. So I'm just pretty pleased that I can do it at all. So you bring it out for the last one, pause, and then squeeze in. Then we're gonna rest, stretch it out, roll your back out, give yourself a little ease off here, and just feel everything stretch around the base of your hips. It's not really the base of your hips, the top of your hips. The base of your body. Bring it in, hands together. We're doing 10 more, drive that spine down and then brace and squeeze it in. The reason this is gonna be handy for your squat, it's gonna help you to brace your core. Um, and one day when you've got 400 kilos on your back, squatting 
in the Olympics, you're going to be really glad that you did this exercise. It's going to help. I promise. Bring it in. Nice. We have five more. You keep it as slow as you need to. Pausing on that out and bringing it in. Crushing nuts with your gigantic ab muscles. And again. Squeeze. Two more. Dos más. Last one, pause and bring it in. Lovely, hug your knees in if you need to. Take them over, release that tension around the top of your glutes. Ah, oh, and again, one more time because this is really important and because it's gonna feel good. Bring it in. Brace, hands in a get set, get set and activate. Good, bring it out and squeeze it in. So nine more and then I probably won't sing any more to, at you today. We do have one more exercise though, so don't go anywhere. Good. So this is something that you can definitely also add in regularly. If you're normally like a gym goer or you're working out in a class or something, this exercise is quite a nice thing to do before you're gonna lift weights. Likewise with the ankle mobilization, if you ever go to classes where you squat, um, you know, like a barbell class or something similar, uh, even hit, then the ankle mobilization would be a good thing to do as part of your warm up. So even if it's not part of the warm up in the class, you can add it in because you can do it before you go into the class, get everything active. Good, squeeze, last one. Fabulous, and then bring it in. We're gonna just do a little core work now. Let me just move away from the wall fractionally. Hands are gonna be on the floor. We're gonna bring the knees up here. I want you to let them come over to the side, but by keeping both shoulders on the floor and stopping, and then bringing it back in. So when you feel your shoulders are about to lift from the floor, I want you to stop and then pull them back in. So this isn't us trying to get the biggest movement possible. It's us trying to get the biggest movement possible around here. So around our obliques. And these come over. We're going to stop and then we're drawing it back in. Good. So it's part stretch. Part workout. So over. So we're stretching across the top of the body. And then as you bring it in, that's, it's all contracting to draw it back in. Good. You're going four more. Delightful. Excellent. Two more, two more. And the final countdown. Really nice. And then rest. Pop your feet on the floor and just let everything catch up with itself. One more stretch. One, not one more stretch. One more of these. One more set and then we're done. Just let everything happen. And then we'll get in for our last 10 reps. So coming over and squeezing it in. Keep it controlled, pause, experiment and get to know where the end of your rep is. So as you get more confident with each movement, you'll start to realize that it's possibly your mind telling you no rather than your body. So it's your perception of what you're capable of rather than your body's perception. So I'm not saying push it really hard, I'm just saying if you are doing something because you think that'll do, that's quite different from your body saying, nah, babe, not today. So we get used to our body is telling us what it can and can't do and us actually listening to it. So some days um, one exercise might not feel great. We have to listen to our body that day. But another day it might feel incredible and just feel like, yeah, we own this. So you just have to adapt to what your body is saying to you on any given day. Well done, bring it out. That was your last rep. Use one leg to swing yourself up. Give yourself a giant clap on the back. Tap on the back. Yeah. And I will see you tomorrow for a little bit more action and to increase the magic we're already building. Have a great day.